The year is 1962 and Trinidad and Tobago chose to join North America and adopt the NTSC standard for the broadcast of the country's first analog television signal. Trinidad and Tobago is now on the verge of another such important crossroad in broadcast television as this country, like others, will have to adopt the technological evolution to digital or what is now conned Digital Terrestrial Television or DTT. As with other digital platforms like cable, satellite and broadband, Digital Terrestrial Television offers viewers a vastly greater picture quality and choice of content than analog, but with one unique difference, the ability to ensure viewers have ready access to free-to-air digital broadcasting. But which of the competing variants of broadcast television systems should we adopt? When should the switchover begin? These are some of the questions raised at the ICT Open Forum seminar entitled Switching from Analog to Digital Television Broadcasting, Issues and Challenges for Trinidad and Tobago. Mr. Selby Wilson, Chairman of the Telecommunications Authority of Trinidad and Tobago, highlighted some of the requirements to be considered for this next generation television service. There are several key aspects which need to be addressed and finalized in order to have a successful switchover to digital television. Of specific importance is the digital terrestrial television broadcasting standard that each country will need to adopt. Currently, no specific standard has been adopted by the Caribbean region. There are three main standards, the DVB, the European standard, the ATSC, the US standard, and the ISDB, the Japanese standard. The choice of the standard is crucial because it determines what transmitting equipment will be needed to be utilized by broadcasters, and it would also determine the choice in the digital-ready television and set-up top boxes consumers will be required to buy. It is a great opportunity for the Caribbean to strive to have the same standard across the Caribbean. Countries worldwide within regions 1, 2 and 3 have already switched over to digital broadcast, with many more carded for 2015. This digital television transition allows the freeing up of the electromagnetic spectrum, or what is called the digital dividend. Mr. Ryan James, broadcast engineer at the Telecommunications Authority of Trinidad and Tobago, explains the significance of this released bandwidth. When we go digital, you're looking at spectrum efficiency. Spectrum efficiency means that with the same amount of spectrum that you use, you can provide more services. Currently, we have our analog broadcasters using UHF, VHF channels, which comprises each of six megahertz of spectrum to provide one content channel. When we go digital, that same six megahertz of spectrum can now provide between six and up to 10 content channels. So you get more services with the same amount of spectrum that you use. There's a term digital dividend. Now, as touched with by the chairman's speech, there's a benefit when you have the spectrum efficiency in that for the same amount of content that you're providing currently, you use less channels. When you use less channels, you are able to relinquish or free up channels that you don't necessarily need. And this is what we term digital dividend. This freed up channel availability allows you now to provide other services, such as cellular or broadband wireless access services. In fact, some of you may be familiar with the United States um, example where their regulator, the FCC, was able to auction some of this spectrum and raise uh, close to 19 billion US dollars in auction bids um, for the digital dividend for introduction of cellular and advanced wireless access services. Mr. Alan Downey, broadcast consultant and specialist, discusses the opportunities and the need for perspective change with regard to the challenges in the digital switchover. So digital is just an evolution. It's not a revolution. There's no need to be afraid of it. It's not going to do MD out of business. It might change the business. It definitely will change the way you broadcast, but it's not going to put you out of business. It's actually going to generate more business for everybody involved. All the stakeholders have to work together. And here's a suggestion. Look at digital terrestrial television 
A bit like you look at your electricity supply, at your water supply, at what have you, as an infrastructure project. It's not broadcasting, it's now a national infrastructure project. If you look at it like that, it actually begins to make a lot more sense and a lot more of a buy-in idea to everybody. Make it an infrastructure. And with that comes the opportunities to be able to get digital content to the home. Now, content doesn't just mean pictures and sound. Content means data in all forms. So you can think of it as data going into the house freely transmitted over the air. So people in caravans, who are people who have not got electricity. There are folks in the UK that do not have electricity to the house. They generate it themselves. All that sort of stuff uh, is available. Able to be connect schools and other public buildings can all get connected into this freely over the air. All sorts of source of data and information. And who's this guy? John Logie Baird. John Logie Baird. He went to the same university as I did, Strathclyde University in Glasgow. And he demonstrated television in Santa Cruz in Trinidad in 1920. Did anybody know that? Is that common knowledge here? You, you all knew that? Fantastic. That's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. It was in a marmalade making factory. Absolutely fantastic. You should be proud of yourself. You are the source of te all television. Now, it was a mechanical system. It was going nowhere, but it was a mechanical system. It was the first. He was a pioneer, not the inventor, an absolute pioneer of television. And you should be proud that Trinidad started television in 1920. And by 2020, you will have a full 3D, fully digital system available on this island. Attendees expressed their concerns, requests and suggestions, most notably as to the choice of the best digital standard and the signal strength nationwide. Um, was the pros and cons actually going to a particular standard, considering that the South American parts uh, which we are more closely, or which we lie more closely to it. Um, they use the ISDB standard. The final position on the choice of standard, we're leaving uh, largely for the, um, vent, um, the broadcasters to make recommendations to us. Of course, there, there will be policy considerations in relation to what might be the best standard. Uh, the Caribbean as a whole, from a harmonization point of view, obviously you mentioned that in your, in your second question, that needs to be considered as well. We have been in contact with, with several of the Caribbean players, um, with organizations within the, the Caribbean, um, the CDB, um, CTU, Canto, and so on, uh, uh, in direct contact with places like Jamaica and Barbados, who are at this point considering an adoption of standard. Uh, our chairman did mention that if it is possible that we um, reach some sort of a, uh, a position for a Caribbean-wide adoption, Obviously, that will be ideal. So we haven't yet hung our hat on any particular standard. The, the uh, sort of considerations are ongoing with all the stakeholders, including our member states within the Caribbean. At the end of the day, hopefully, we'll come up with a harmonized standard or a standard that we can all adopt. Uh, the ATSC system in, in the States, um, that um, was w one of the reasons it was chosen was it was designed to work with the rabbit ear rabbit ear and indoor antennas, which were very prevalent in the big cities. That was one of the reasons the ATSC format, which still uses vestigial sidebanding um, uh, version, that, that was one of the options that went for an ATSC system. Um, and I do understand that in the States they are considering that that may have been a mistake. But I think it's right that you have not made a decision because the decision is not clear as to how you ought to go and cooperation is necessary. Um, you could see, it's obvi obviously, you would go ATSC because you are NTSC at the moment. That's obvious. But on the other hand, on the other hand, why don't you do AS ISDB because South America is all ISDB. Which flavour do you want? On the other hand, if you want maximum payload, you go DVB-T2, particularly if you want to transmit to bicycles um, because you can have mobile TV. Uh, so therefore, and on the third hand... Etc. It is not an easy decision, not an easy decision at all, and there are all sorts of factors. The little three-legged stool burrows round because there's politics, there's money, what can the consumers buy, etc., etc., etc. I am delighted to say that I will not be making that decision. <laughs> it's easier in some of the southwestern districts to see the Venezuelan TV than Trinidad, even the radio. So I hope now with the uh, new uh, signal distributors, yes. that will be taken into consideration. A note of warning that much as we are all subject to the laws of God, we are also subject to the laws of nature, which were made by God. And one of the laws of nature is that 
radio signals, be they analog or digital, or anything you like, are funny beasts. I would be very, very loath to ever say you can guarantee 100% coverage, even in a flat plain like the Sahara Desert. Mm. Um, it's just not possible. However, having said that, digital is capable of giving better coverage than analog, and it cures many of the problems which prevent analog giving acceptable reception. I seem to be getting the notion that um, you all have already decided that the broadcaster will be a content provider. Mm -hmm. All right, I, I, can you clarify that, please? Because there may be broadcasters that would like to be signal distributors as well. I did mention there's a, um, that is a possibility. We haven't fully um, looked at the issue in terms of who exactly would be allowed to participate in the, in the, in the bid process for distributors. The way the spectrum would be divided for a distributor, there will be at most three maybe distributors that will be possible based on the spectrum allocation that we have. This is why I was using conservatively a kind of a number of two distributors. That would mean that the, 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 the current um, framework in which broadcasters operate, and I mentioned that point, where they own a network, a single channel network, provide the content on that channel, that will disappear in the digital um, scenario. That model will no longer exist. You will have a common carrier model where the distributor would be a network that would carry several um, channels, several free tier channels. In fact, one distributor can carry all the um, free tier um, channels that we now have. The options are many and the decisions carry a level of permanence, but it is consultations like these that will help in reshaping the sector beyond analog broadcasting. I want to thank everyone for participating here today. I mean, it has been quite a, an exhilarating sort of experience. I believe um, a lot of the issues have been debated. There's uh, quite a bit of uh, food for thought for the authority in relation to taking the matter forward. Ryan did mention that we have established a working committee, a working group, which has been charged with the responsibility to look at several of the issues, some of which have been discussed here today, notably the issue of the standard to be adopted, the issue of the time frame to be, to be deployed in the, in the actual migration from analog to digital, the whole issue of uh, public education, public awareness that, uh, that was brought to the fore in Alan's presentation, those are the three big ones. We have the issue of disposal of EcoPont. For example, all the unused television sets that, that will be uh, made obsolete, so to speak. So the working group, the membership of the working group has been instructed in such a way that all the various issues uh, that, that, that have been identified will be deliberated. And we expect that recommendations will be made to the authority um, upon which we will make further recommendations to our board, to our policy um, players in order that the, the final decision is taken on how we proceed with this matter. Yeah.